Hey guys, what's up? It's Alex or Nuznuz here, and in today's video, I'm going to be talking about and answering something that I get asked or told a lot on stream or in the comments, and I like to help you guys out when you ask me this. It gets me kind of thinking about these things because I've been doing high-level PBM for a while, and sometimes it's hard to get myself back to the perspective where I was three, four years ago. So the thing you guys ask me a lot is, why can't I stop dying? I keep wanting to get into harder bosses or try mid or high-level PBM but I just die and I get really demotivated and even though the death rework has come out and that makes it a lot more forgiving if you do die it still can suck to die a lot it still can suck to feel like you're just not making any progress and it does still cost some money albeit not as much as it would before so in this video not only am I going to talk about items and things you can get or unlock that can decrease your chances of dying but also I'm going to talk about some ways that you can prevent yourself from from dying just in general. So if you want to get better at PVM, make sure you hit the subscribe button so you get all the latest PVM help videos right when they come out. Smash a like if you die a lot at PVM and let's get into this video. So first I'm going to talk about some items and upgrades that can actually 100% prevent you from dying in certain scenarios or maybe bring you over the edge to get a harder boss kill that you may not have gotten otherwise. First is one that will absolutely change your life, one of my favorite here which is Disruption Shield. Shield. Now, Disruption Shield is a lunar spell unlocked at Livid Farm that I'm sure maybe you're a person who's heard me say this before, or you've seen it, and you're just like, nah, I don't really need it. It's not that good. I'll get it later. I'll get it some other time. Let me tell you that this spell is going to change how you PVM. It's bought for 290k produce points at the Livid Farm, which can be achieved by playing the minigame or buying the Livid plants from uh, the traveling merchant, or you can get them from farming requests as well. So there's a lot of different ways to get these either passively or do it yourself. Now when you cast this spell the next hit you receive from an NPC is negated. Now this can't be used everywhere like some attacks like instant kills or virago bleed attacks but most attacks you can use disruption shield on and with a 60 second cooldown if you're doing let's say a 5 or 6 minute kill and you use this every time it's up you're going to be blocking a very good bit of damage thus not needing to eat as much saving a ton of food and probably dishing out more damage but a real perk to this when you use disruption shield you also have a lot of free time to soul split as you know the next hit will be negated so you don't need to pray until the hit after that and if you time it right you can actually have a ton of time to soul split up to full health so not only is this saving you food from being hit or keeping you from dying to big attacks it's also allowing you to soul split more and can be used sort of like a panic button or a way to block those big attacks that you're not ready for like the Tello so much power. Now speaking of a panic button, the next item is something that I think you guys should bring to most places that is like a new boss to you or if you're going to a boss with high hitting attacks, that's the vitality potion. These are fairly cheap and I bring these in almost every preset. This potion doubles your maximum and current life points for 6 seconds and it can essentially be used at a lot of places to tank big hits or survive. At Arch Glacier you guys have seen me use this fairly often to tank the cannon and if I don't have devotion up it can be a lifesaver. It can be used at Telos to tank the so much power. It can be used at Zamrock to tank the big bomb on the last phase. And if you're just panicking or if you're about to get hit by a huge hit, this is absolutely a lifesaver, literally. For only 1k a potion, I definitely recommend trying this out at places that you're struggling with. Maybe you're struggling with a big hit or a place that you tend to panic a lot. It could be a nice crutch to try to potentially survive or avoid those hits or even save you. Next is actually a tactic more than a singular item, which is cycling the defensives Devo and Debilitate, the defensive thresholds. For the people that run out of food a lot and that's the reason you're dying at a place rather than getting like KO'd, this can be a way to take less damage, especially at bosses that are hard hitting. When I was at Higher Enrage Arch Glacier and I knew I didn't have the cannon and I was getting hit over 4k through my prayer, cycling these off was amazing, as well as Zamrock at the Higher Enrages. I use this a lot to take less damage from the auto attacks. Debilitate reduces your damage taken for 7.8 seconds, while Devotion actually blocks 100% of damage taken if you're using the right protection prayer 
While you can't keep these up constantly one after another, using them when you can and trying to cycle them, you know, as close to each other as you can is 100% worth it, especially if you're learning a boss. It reduces a lot of the damage you're taking, and I recommend just trying it out next time you go to a boss that you're struggling on food with. And if you combine some of these other items or spells like Disruption Shield, you're gonna negate a ton of damage adding some of these together. Now, I still know that a lot of people, including me, are are going to die at bosses. Maybe you mess up or get hit something big. Having a sign of life is beneficial as it sort of gives you a second chance at the kill as if you were going to die, you get revived. Uh, a few weeks ago, I would have definitely mentioned the Ring of Death here as an insane way to keep you to, from dying at PVM or give you a second chance, but sadly it was nerfed into absolute oblivion for some reason. So the sign of life still remains as a great way to be revived if you do die. I personally have the defense cape perk on my max cape, which just makes it so I always have a sign of life, but you can physically wear one if you want. You can bring the defense cape or a portal of life in your inventory as well. Uh, I know it sounds weird this is to prevent you from dying and technically you do die uh, if your sign of life procs but there are so many kills that I you know have signed and then finished so essentially that sign of life have has gotten me that kill I would have died without it uh, so that is making me a lot more money it's probably made me a ton of money and uh, it's just a good thing to have all together especially when learning or pretty much at all times. Now this is more of a mindset said thing but one way you can stop yourself from dying so much is to actually learn the boss mechanics it sounds simple but a lot of people tend to go into new bosses try to dps uh and if your dps isn't absolutely amazing you're going to struggle if you at least don't have some recognition of the mechanics a lot of people will go in and when they learn a boss they're going in they're learning a few mechanics then they're like oh that's a mechanic okay you die then you go back and it's a long demotivating process when dying so so if you're first starting a boss, I recommend doing this. I recommend going in with some of these defensive things and kind of just, you know, if a boss has phases, so let's say you're going to Telos, going into Telos and just tanking the hits, not really attacking too much and just seeing what the attacks are, how you can avoid them, going in on practice mode so you won't lose any money if you die and sort of just feeling your way through the mechanics uh, and then you can sort of try to add in DPSing more some of this stuff, but at the core level you need to really know these mechanics to do a boss i know people including myself that will brute force kills at bosses when starting out but then after that you're kind of like okay i did it once i kind of brute forced it but i still don't really know what's going on that was kind of me when starting out at zami uh we got the kills but i still just didn't really you know know uh all the mechanics and it wasn't until I really sat there and tried to learn them rather than just trying to DPS as fast as I can uh, that I got a lot better at the boss could time things could use these defensives when I knew they were good uh, especially I see people struggling at arch glacier and this is a great way you know actually going in on practice mode or those lower enrages and learning each specific mechanic I think arch glacier does a great job at that so make sure you're actually learning the mechanics and not just going in trying to brute force it down Dying and getting demotivated. Now, just to end off here, going back to cycling the defensives, you can actually do this a lot easier if you camp a defender. So you can get a defender in a variety of ways. You first have to get the uh, defender from Barrows, and then Nex, and then Calphite King, and then you essentially can get a tier. Uh, tier 90 defender which these defenders are super nice because they're better than camping a shield but you still can basically use all your defensives like reflect uh, resonance um, you can of course use devo and debilitate anyway you can use barricade these are great for learning a mechanic intense boss like something like carapec and a lot of people just boss with these in general and it makes it way easier so i definitely recommend looking into using a defender it's just a really great learning tool and something i highly recommend as well and also there's other ways to negate damage and take less damage such as the Aegis Aura which was actually just buffed so now you take a flat 10% reduced damage uh, when using this aura so uh, with mage you have stuff like animate dead and using stuff like Ganodermic or crit bloom but now if you are a ranger or a melee and you're at a place that you don't need a ton of damage or maybe you just want to learn and you can kind of um, give up that DPS aura 
which is hard to do, so it's not worth it in every scenario, but if you're learning, using the Aegis Aura can be a good option. But yeah, do not get discouraged, guys. I promise if you add some of this stuff on, you will see some results. Make sure you don't ever tell yourself you can't do it, because I believe in you guys. You can kill that boss you want to, and yeah, thanks for watching.